What is going on with Ethereum? Well, that's a question on people's minds as the crypto space is showing signs of life. All eyes have been on the Bitcoin ETF approval, and there's less attention on Ethereum right now. And if you actually go check the blockchain, you might notice that the amount of daily transactions is way down. The gas prices have fallen off a cliff. Daily active addresses are really low. All these data points suggest that people are leaving Ethereum. So is that true? What does that mean for the leading smart contract platform by market share? Is something going to replace it? Well, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, get ahead of the next crypto wave, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So if you analyze the usage metrics for Ethereum in the last year or so, it looks like a ghost town, okay? In terms of the daily transactions, they've been on a steady downtrend ever since the top of the crypto market back in 2021. The same thing is for the daily active Ethereum addresses. It's going way down back to levels we haven't seen since 2020. And the gas prices, which are typically an indication of demand for the network, have really fallen off a cliff and are way back down to early 2020 levels, which kind of indicates that people aren't really using the chain directly. And if you look at this data, you might think that people are abandoning the technology. I mean, after all, Ethereum gets a lot of hate. You know, people say it's too slow, it's too expensive, nobody's gonna use it, and that this other blockchain over there is way faster, it's better, it's going to replace it soon. And so if the data looks like people are leaving, then where are they going, okay? Number one, are they just leaving the crypto space completely? Or number two, are they abandoning it in favor of some other technology? Well, are either of these things true? Let's look at the alternatives, okay? If you compare it to a popular competitor like Solana, for example, you kind of see the same story, okay? The non-voting daily transactions is really low compared to where we were last bull market, still continuing to trend downward. The daily active addresses are really low compared to where it was before. So that doesn't look like a compelling alternative. You're seeing the same type of story with Aptos or Sui, who are you know claiming to be the new Ethereum killers, but they haven't really gotten any type of adoption yet. So that doesn't look like the answer, okay? So could the answer be that people are just abandoning the crypto space entirely because we've been in a bear market for a while? Well, that could be true. That could be why people are leaving Ethereum. But what if that's not the case at all, right? What if people aren't leaving Ethereum? No, no, no. What if I told you that Ethereum is actually growing? Well, that's actually what I believe is happening. So how can that be the case based upon all these metrics that I just showed you here? Well, all these metrics fail to account a different metric that you have to account for in the process. And that's the adoption of layer two scaling solutions on top of Ethereum. If you go to a website like l2beat.com and you look at the number of daily transactions for Ethereum, which has been trending down, like I just showed you, and you compare it to layer two scaling solution transactions, you can see that those have been on a steady increase ever since they launched and all throughout 2023. And so what I believe is happening here is that a lot of the transactions that would be normally happening on top of Ethereum are moving towards layer twos. And if you combine all these things together, the activity on top of the Ethereum blockchain in aggregate has actually increased throughout this entire process, even in the midst of this brutal crypto bear market. And so let's break that down a little more so that you can understand exactly what's happening behind the scenes. So again, you might see things like, you know, daily active transactions going down or daily active users going down or the gas prices going down. But a lot of that's migrating towards ETH layer twos. So what is that if you're not even familiar? Okay, so a layer two scaling solution is basically like a blockchain that sits on top of Ethereum, okay? This is the long-term vision for Ethereum scaling, is not to go connect your MetaMask wallet and point directly to Ethereum itself, but to point to this different blockchain or layer two, where you do all your on-chain activity, you pay the gas fees in Ethereum or Ether, and those transactions get settled back onto the main Ethereum chain. So one of the most common ways you can do this is with rollups. So basically this takes all the transactions you're doing and rolls them up into a single transaction that's a reference that gets included back onto the main Ethereum chain. So if you look at, you know, these transactions per day, all right, that are going down, then that could represent, you know, thousands of other transactions that are getting included into a single transaction somewhere else, okay? So while this is going down, that could still account for this big increase in transaction volume over here, even though this number is going down. And so said a different way, people aren't leaving Ethereum, they're actually migrating to layer twos, 
And this is actually causing the Ethereum space to grow in aggregate despite what the layer one metrics look like. And that's another reason why the gas prices are down, okay? Gas prices are indication of demand. That's how it works. So basically the more people are trying to use the blockchain all at one time, the higher the gas prices go. But people aren't using the direct layer one blockchain itself as much There's less demand for that. That demand is shifted to layer twos and that's actually what we want. And so things are working exactly like they're supposed to because scaling with Ethereum layer twos has long been the strategy for the future of Ethereum. You know, as proposed by Vitalik Buterin, the mastermind behind Ethereum himself, and also adopted by the broader Ethereum community, which has coalesced around this vision to scale with layer two rollups to make the blockchain fast, scalable, and ready for prime time. And so really everything is going according to plan and actually better than according to plan because this has been growing while the crypto markets have been in decline for the better part of two years, okay? So if that's the case, then instead of pointing to this really gloomy outlook that looks like Ethereum's declining, I think there's actually a pretty bright future ahead of Ethereum. So let me explain why. Now, of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. But number one, you know, one of Ethereum's major problems is actually getting fixed, okay? One of the biggest complaints about Ethereum is that it's too slow, it's too expensive to use. You always hear that nobody's gonna use it, they're gonna use the other blockchain instead. But I think it's actually securing its lead role as the number one smart contract platform. You know, it's fixing the gas fee problem that really plagued people back in 2021. You have people like jump in the crypto space because they're so excited and they go start using things like on Ethereum, like buying and selling NFTs or trading tokens. And a lot of people were completely priced out. They were saying like, hey, it's way too expensive to trade on Ethereum. I'm gonna go use this other thing over here. But now we don't have that problem. So if the crypto space continues to trend forward and enter into a new wave of expansion and you know maybe a new explosive bull market and people start flocking back into the space, that's either people who left before and are coming back or new people who are coming in for the first time, and they're not gonna experience these same types of problems that they did in previous cycles where Ethereum was so congested and unusable. They're gonna be able to use these layer twos, and that's gonna really be a big deal for the adoption of Ethereum through this next wave. And throughout this whole process, we've seen new types of application launch on Ethereum layer twos, which have never launched on any other blockchain before. Like social tokens, for example, we saw friend tech come out of nowhere and explode. That's one of the reasons for this big spike in on-chain activity right here. And if we go into another bull cycle, okay, or a new meme coin season, even if it's not a major long-term bull trend, that's going to attract more people into the space. And if we have fast, scalable, secure layer twos and up of Ethereum, that's most likely going to be one of the de facto places that people are doing things like token trading on DEXs. People are super hungry to trade on DEXs because they don't have to use regular crypto exchanges or buy and sell NFTs or any new type of asset that comes out, you know, during this process. And if all that activity, you know, goes back on the Ethereum chain, then that can be huge for the network and, you know, could even accrue to the value of the cryptocurrency itself, you know, Ether. And on top of this, Ethereum has a bright roadmap of upgrades coming up in its near future as well. Because you have to understand, the Ethereum that we have today is not the final form. It was released as sort of like a minimum viable product, and they've slowly upgraded the blockchain over time to get to that final form that's ready for mass adoption and scaling that we need in order to achieve that. So we have the Ethereum Dankun upgrade, which is most likely to go live uh, in early 2024. So that's another bright thing in Ethereum's future to look forward to, that it's actually shipping the roadmap that it's promised to deliver, and that we're that much closer to the final Ethereum that we've been promised. And the timing of this is absolutely crazy, okay? If 2024 really is the, the year that we go into the next crypto bull run, then these types of upgrades and the Ethereum layer 2 adoption that we're seeing happen right now could be the perfect storm for this space to get absolutely insane. Now, nobody's got a crystal ball to know exactly when this is gonna happen, but the best thing you can do is be ready for it when it does. So how can you do that? Well, of course you can smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. You can subscribe to this channel. You know, you're gonna see videos just like this that are keeping you two steps ahead of where this space is going. But the best way to do this is to double down on your skills and become a blockchain developer now to take advantage of all this opportunity. Whether you're trying to jump in the industry, land a job, create your own bots, whatever it is, you want to be ready for when the fireworks go off. So I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you become a blockchain master and you really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. The next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.